Enchanting Melodies, The Journey of Taylor Swift Taylor Allison Swift was born on December 13, 1989, in West Reading, Pennsylvania. She is named after the singer-songwriter James Taylor. Her father, Scott Kingsley Swift, is a former stockbroker for Merrill Lynch. Her mother, Andrea Gardner Swift, née Finley, worked for a time as a mutual fund marketing executive. Her younger brother, Austin, is an actor. Swift's maternal grandmother, Marjorie Finley, née Molenkamp, was an opera singer, whose singing in church became one of Swift's earliest memories of music that shaped her career. Swift's mother is of Scottish and German descent, and her father is of Scottish and English descent with distant Italian ancestry. Swift spent her early years on a Christmas tree farm in Pennsylvania that her father had purchased from one of his clients, and she spent her summers at her family's vacation home in Stone Harbor, New Jersey, where she occasionally performed acoustic songs at a local coffee shop. She was raised Christian and attended preschool and kindergarten at a Montessori school run by the Bernardine Sisters of St. Francis before transferring to the Wincroft School. When her family moved to Wyomissing, Pennsylvania, she attended Wyomissing Area Junior slash Senior High School. As a child, she performed in Burke's Youth Theater Academy productions and traveled regularly to New York City for vocal and acting lessons. Her early love for country music was influenced by Shania Twain, Patsy Cline, Leanne Rimes, and the Dixie Chicks, and she spent weekends performing at local festivals and events. After watching a documentary about Faith Hill, she became determined to pursue a country music career in Nashville, Tennessee. At 11, Swift traveled to Nashville with her mother to visit record labels and submit demo tapes of Dolly Parton and Dixie Chicks karaoke covers. She was rejected by all the labels, which led her to focus on songwriting. She started learning the guitar at 12 with the help of Ronnie Kramer, a computer repairman and local musician who also assisted Swift with writing an original song. In 2003, Swift and her parents started working with the talent manager Dan Dimtro. With his help, Swift modeled for Abercrombie and Fitch and had an original song included on a Maybelline compilation CD. After performing original songs at an RCA Records showcase, 13-year-old Swift was given an artist development deal and began to travel regularly to Nashville with her mother. To help Swift break into the country music scene, her father transferred to Merrill Lynch's Nashville office when she was 14 years old, and the family relocated to Hendersonville, Tennessee. Swift attended Hendersonville High School before transferring to Aaron Academy after two years, which better accommodated her touring schedule through homeschooling. She graduated one year early. In Nashville, Swift worked with experienced music row songwriters such as Troy Verges, Brett Beavers, Brett James, Mac McAnally, and the Warren Brothers and formed a lasting working relationship with Liz Rose. They began meeting for two-hour writing sessions every Tuesday afternoon after school. Rose called the sessions, some of the easiest I've ever done. Basically, I was just her editor. She'd write about what happened in school that day. She had such a clear vision of what she was trying to say. And she'd come in with the most incredible hooks. Swift became the youngest artist signed by the Sony-slash-ATV Tree Publishing House, but left then BMG-owned RCA Records, later bought by Sony Music, at the age of 14 due to the label's lack of care and them, cut, ting, other people's stuff. She was also concerned that development deals can shelve artists and recalled, I genuinely felt that I was running out of time. I wanted to capture these years of my life on an album while they still represented what I was going through. At an industry showcase at Nashville's Bluebird Cafe in 2005, Swift caught the attention of Scott Borchetta, a DreamWorks Records executive who was preparing to form an independent record label, Big Machine Records. She had first met Borchetta in 2004, 38, she was one of Big Machine's first signings, and her father purchased a 3% stake in the company for an estimated $120,000. She began working on her eponymous debut album with Nathan Chapman. Swift wrote or co-wrote all album tracks, and co-writers included Rose, Robert Ellis Oral, Brian Marr, and Angelo Petroglia. Released in October 2006, Taylor Swift peaked at number 5 on the US Billboard 200, 
on which it spent 157 weeks, the longest stay on the chart by any release in the US in the 2000s decade. Swift became the first female country music artist to write or co-write every track on a US Platinum Certified debut album. Big Machine Records was still in its infancy during the June 2006 release of the lead single, Tim McGraw, which Swift and her mother helped promote by packaging and sending copies of the CD single to country radio stations. As there was not enough furniture at the label yet, they would sit on the floor to do so. She spent much of 2006 promoting Taylor Swift with a radio tour and television appearances, she opened for Rascal Flats on select dates during their 2006 tour, as a replacement for Eric Church. Borchetta said that although record industry peers initially disapproved of his signing a 15-year-old singer-songwriter, Swift tapped into a previously unknown market, teenage girls who listened to country music. Following Tim McGraw, for more singles were released throughout 2007 and 2008, Teardrops on My Guitar, Our Song, Picture to Burn, and Should Have Said No. All appeared on Billboard's Hot Country Songs, with Our Song and Should Have Said No reaching number one. Our Song made Swift the youngest person to single-handedly write and sing a Hot Country Songs number one single, and Teardrops on My Guitar was Swift's breakthrough single on mainstream radio and charts. Swift released two EPs, the Taylor Swift Holiday Collection in October 2007 and Beautiful Eyes in July 2008. She promoted her debut album extensively as the opening act for other country musicians' tours in 2006 and 2007, including those by George Strait, Brad Paisley, and Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Swift won multiple accolades for Taylor Swift. She was one of the recipients of the Nashville Songwriters Association Songwriter Slash Artist of the Year in 2007, becoming the youngest person given the title. She also won the Country Music Association's Horizon Award for Best New Artist, the Academy of Country Music Awards Top New Female Vocalist, and the American Music Awards Favorite Country Female Artist Honor. She was also nominated for Best New Artist at the 50th Annual Grammy Awards. In 2008, she opened for Rascal Flats again and briefly dated the singer Joe Jonas. You Belong With Me won Best Female Video at the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards. Her acceptance speech was interrupted by the rapper Kanye West, an incident that became the subject of controversy and widespread media coverage. That year, Swift won five American Music Awards, including Artist of the Year and Favorite Country Album. Billboard named her 2009's Artist of the Year. She won Video of the Year and Female Video of the Year for Love Story at the 2009 CMT Music Awards, where she made a parody video of the song with rapper T-Pain called Thug Story. At the 52nd Annual Grammy Awards, Fearless was named Album of the Year and Best Country Album, and White Horse won Best Country Song and Best Female Country Vocal Performance. At the 2009 Country Music Association Awards, Swift won Album of the Year for Fearless and was named Entertainer of the Year, the youngest person to win the honor. At the 54th Annual Grammy Awards in 2012, Swift performed Mean, which won Best Country Song and Best Country Solo Performance. She was named Songwriter Slash Artist of the Year by the Nashville Songwriters Association, 2010 and 2011, Woman of the Year by Billboard, 2011, and Entertainer of the Year by the Academy of Country Music, 2011 and 2012, and the Country Music Association in 2011. At the American Music Awards of 2011, Swift won Artist of the Year and Favorite Country Album. Rolling Stone named Speak Now on its list of 50 Best Female Albums of All Time, 2012. Swift continued writing songs for films and featuring on other artists' releases. On the soundtrack album to The Hunger Games, 2012, Swift wrote and recorded Eyes Open and Safe and Sound, the latter of which was co-written with the Civil Wars and T-Bone Burnett. Safe and Sound won the Grammy Award for Best Song Written for Visual Media. She wrote and produced Sweeter Than Fiction with Jack Antonoff for the soundtrack to One Chance, 2013. Swift featured on B.O.B's Both of Us, 2012, and provided vocals for Tim McGraw's Highway Don't Care, 2013, also featuring Keith Urban. 
She was a voice actress in The Lorax, 2012, made a cameo in the sitcom New Girl, 2013, and had a supporting role in the dystopian film The Giver, 2014. From 2010 to 2013, Swift was romantically involved with the actor Jake Gyllenhaal, the political heir Connor Kennedy, and the singer Harry Styles. In November 2018, Swift signed a new deal with Universal Music Group, which promoted her subsequent albums under Republic Records imprint. The contract included a provision for Swift to maintain ownership of her masters. In addition, in the event that Universal sold any part of its stake in Spotify, it agreed to distribute a non-recoupable portion of the proceeds among its artists. Swift's first album with Republic Records, Lover, was released in August 2019. She produced the album with Antonoff, Louis Bell, Frank Dukes, and Joe Little. Lover peaked atop the charts of such territories as Australia, Canada, Ireland, Mexico, Norway, Sweden, the UK, and the US. The album spawned five singles, Me, You Need to Calm Down, Lover, The Man, and Cruel Summer, the first two singles peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100, and the lattermost single became a resurgent success in 2023, reaching number one. Swift's re-recordings of her first six studio albums began with Fearless, Taylor's Version, and Red, Taylor's Version, which were released in April and November 2021. Both peaked atop the Billboard 200, and the former was the first re-recorded album to do so. Fearless, Taylor's Version, was preceded by Love Story, Taylor's Version, which made Swift the second artist after Dolly Parton to have both the original and re-recorded versions of a song reach number one on Hot Country Songs. Red, Taylor's Version, was supported by All Too Well, 10-Minute Version, which became the longest song in history to top the Hot 100. According to Billboard, Swift was the top-earning solo artist in the US and the top-earning musician worldwide of 2021. She won six American Music Awards including Artist of the Year in 2022. At the MTV Video Music Awards, Swift won her third and fourth trophies for Video of the Year with All Too Well, the short film, her self-directed short film that accompanies All Too Well, 10-minute version, in 2022 and Antihero, in 2023. At the Grammy Awards, All Too Well, the short film won Best Music Video at the 65th Annual Ceremony, 2023, and Midnight's won Best Pop Vocal Album and Swift's record fourth album of the year at the 66th Annual Ceremony. Swift became the artist with the most album of the year wins in Grammy history. Swift's next two re-recorded albums, Speak Now, Taylor's Version, and 1989, Taylor's Version, were released in July and October 2023. The former made Swift the woman with the most number one albums, 12, in Billboard 200 history, surpassing Barbara Streisand, and the latter was her sixth album to sell one million copies in a single week in the US, claiming her career's largest album sales week. In March 2023, Swift embarked on the era's tour, a retrospective tour covering all her studio albums. Media outlets extensively covered the tour's cultural and economic impact, and its US leg broke the record for the most tickets sold in a day. Ticketmaster received public and political criticisms for mishandling the tour's ticket sales. The era's tour became the highest-grossing tour in history, collecting over $1 billion. Its concert film, released to theaters worldwide on October 13, 2023, grossed over $250 million to become the highest-grossing concert film, and was nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Cinematic and Box Office Achievement. Swift's music releases, touring, and related activities culminated in an unprecedented height of popularity post-pandemic. Music Business Worldwide remarked that she entered a new stratosphere of global career success in 2023. At the 66th Grammy Awards, Swift announced her 11th studio album, The Tortured Poets Department, set for release on April 19, 2024. Swift's net worth is estimated by Forbes and Bloomberg News at $1.1 billion as of October 2023, making her the first musician to achieve billionaire status solely based on her songs and performances. Forbes named her the annual top-earning female musician in 2016, 2019, 
2021, and 2022. She was the highest paid celebrity of 2016 with $170 million, a feat recognized by the Guinness World Records as the highest annual earnings ever for a female musician, which she herself surpassed with $185 million in 2019. Overall, Forbes listed Swift as the highest paid female artist of the 2010s, earning $825 million. She has also developed a real estate portfolio worth $150 million as of 2023, with properties in Nashville, Tribeca, Manhattan, Los Angeles, Samuel Goldwyn Estate, and Rhode Island, High Watch. Back when Taylor Swift was a country music girl, she had country tastes. Her first car was a Chevrolet Silverado, in a bold shade of pink. The truck was a gift to her from Big Machine Records. As her music style changed, so did her personal taste. Her Mercedes-Benz V-Class is not over the top, but it's perfect for the singer. Inside the seats are arranged to face each other. This means Swift can work with her writing team and hold meetings while on the road. This eight-seater set her back $85,000. Next in Swift's fleet of dependable and comfortable cars is her Toyota. The singer famously tries to live a down-to-earth life and has been spotted loading her grocery bags into this spacious truck. Her 2014 model cost her about $65,000. She splashed out on an Audi R8. To balance out her roomy other cars, this one is a compact two-seater. The R8 has a 5.2-liter V10 engine that puts out 525 horsepower and can reach 60 miles per hour in just 3.7 seconds. When she bought it back in 2009, it cost $123,300. One of Swift's most recent purchases was an SV autobiography. She's been spotted driving it around New York with blacked-out windows. The luxury SUV is both her everyday vehicle and the car she takes on business trips. It has a top speed of 176 miles per hour and goes 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.3 seconds. This is one of Swift's most expensive purchases, with a price tag of $209,500. Taylor Swift has another flashy sports car in her collection. This Ferrari is prized for its sleek lines, iconic headlight housing in that trademark shade of red. It's got a top speed of 200 miles per hour and can reach 60 miles per hour in 3 seconds flat. The 458 Italia cost Swift about $240,000, but this barely made a dent in her bank account. Swift is known for her philanthropic efforts. She ranked first on Do Something's 2015 Gone Good list, having received the Star of Compassion from the Tennessee Disaster Services and the Big Help Award from the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards for her dedication to helping others and inspiring others through action. She donated $100,000 to the Red Cross to help the victims of the Iowa flood of 2008. In 2009, she sang at BBC's Children in Need concert and raised £13,000 for the cause. Swift has performed at charity relief events, including Sydney's Sound Relief Concert in response to the May 2010 Tennessee floods, Swift donated $500,000. In 2011, Swift used a dress rehearsal of her Speak Now tour as a benefit concert for victims of recent tornadoes in the U.S., raising more than $750,000. In 2016, she donated $1 million to Louisiana flood relief efforts and $100,000 to the Dolly Parton Fire Fund. Swift donated to food banks after Hurricane Harvey struck Houston in 2017 and at every stop of the era's tour in 2023, she also directly employed local businesses throughout the tour and gave $55 million in bonus payments to her entire crew. Swift donated $1 million for Tennessee tornado relief in 2020 and again in 2023. In February 2024, she donated $100,000 to the family of a woman who died in a shooting at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade. She is a supporter of the arts. A benefactor of the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame, Swift has donated $75,000 to Nashville's Hendersonville High School to help refurbish the school auditorium. $4 million to build a new education center at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, 
$60,000 to the music departments of six U.S. colleges, and $100,000 to the Nashville Symphony. Also a promoter of children's literacy, she has donated money and books to schools around the country. In 2007, Swift partnered with the Tennessee Association of Chiefs of Police to launch a campaign to protect children from online predators. Swift donated to fellow singer-songwriter Kesha to help with her legal battles against Dr. Luke and to actress Mariska Hargitay's Joyful Heart Foundation. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Swift donated to the World Health Organization and Feeding America, and supported independent record stores. Swift performed Soon You'll Get Better on the One World, Together at Home Television Special, a benefit concert curated by Lady Gaga for Global Citizen to raise funds for the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund. In 2018 and 2021, Swift donated to the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network in honor of Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention Month. She has made donations to her fans several times for their medical or academic expenses. Taylor Swift's first notable relationship in the public eye was with Joe Jonas, a member of the popular boy band Jonas Brothers. Their young love blossomed in 2008 but came to an end later that year, reportedly over a phone call that lasted only 27 seconds. Following her split from Jonas, Taylor found romance with Taylor Lautner, her co-star from the movie Valentine's Day. Although their relationship was short-lived, they remained friends after the breakup. Taylor Swift's relationship with singer John Mayer stirred significant media attention due to their age gap. The pair collaborated on the song Half of My Heart and later parted ways, with rumors suggesting that Mayer inspired Swift's song Dear John. In late 2010, Taylor Swift was romantically linked with actor Jake Gyllenhaal. Their relationship, however, was brief, and it reportedly ended in early 2011. Swift's song All Too Well is believed to be inspired by her time with Gyllenhaal. Taylor Swift's relationship with One Direction heartthrob Harry Styles was highly publicized. The couple's romance, which began in late 2012, ended in early 2013. Their split reportedly inspired several songs on Swift's album 1989, including Out of the Woods and Style. Taylor Swift's relationship with DJ and producer Calvin Harris was one of her longest public relationships. The couple appeared happy together and collaborated on the hit song This Is What You Came For. However, they broke up in 2016, and Swift later revealed her role in writing the song under a pseudonym. Following her breakup with Harris, Taylor Swift was briefly involved with British actor Tom Hiddleston. Their whirlwind romance, marked by public outings and travels, captured significant media attention before they parted ways later in 2016. Taylor Swift dated British actor Joe Alwyn for several years. They had a low-key relationship that was mostly kept out of the public eye. They were very supportive of each other and shared many interests. They broke up due to their busy schedules and different goals. She wrote the songs Lover, Cornelia Street, Invisible String, and Evermore, About Him. Taylor Swift and the 1975 lead singer Maddie Healy dated for a few months in 2023, after meeting in 2014 and sparking dating rumors back then. Their relationship was never officially confirmed by either of them, but they were seen holding hands in New York City in June 2023. They reportedly broke up in October 2023, due to their busy schedules and different lifestyles. Their romance caused a lot of controversy among Swift's fans, who disliked Healy's edgy and provocative persona. Taylor Swift is currently dating Travis Kelsey, an American football player who plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. They first sparked dating rumors in July 2023, when he revealed that he tried to give Taylor his number on a friendship bracelet when attending her concert. They were seen holding hands in New York City in June 2023 and she cheered him on at his football game in September 2023. Taylor Swift serves as an inspiration to many for various reasons. Her resilience in the face of challenges, whether personal or professional, showcases the importance of perseverance and self-belief. Through her music, she openly shares her experiences, struggles, and triumphs, resonating with audiences worldwide and fostering a sense of connection and understanding.
Swift's commitment to authenticity and staying true to herself amid constant scrutiny encourages others to embrace their individuality and speak their truth. Additionally, her philanthropic efforts, from supporting charitable causes to advocating for artists' rights, highlight the power of using one's platform for positive change. Overall, Taylor Swift's journey exemplifies courage, creativity, and compassion, inspiring countless individuals to pursue their dreams and make a difference in the world. Do well to follow, comment, like, subscribe and don't forget to turn on notifications to encourage us publish more contents like this, from all of us at Didactic Contents we love you all.